Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and His strength. Constantly seek His face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands. Love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present himself to the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. The kingdom is like this large bush that's enormous when it's fully grown, and the birds can come and dwell in it. There's room for everyone in this kingdom. And so we don't want to constrain the bush, this thing that's growing, or else uh, we'll be missing something. We'll be constraining the kingdom. We can do the same thing with the Word of God which is part of the way that we receive the kingdom. It's how God communicates with us. And we can do that especially when there are confusing passages, when we hear lines like, Wives, be subordinate to your husbands. So when we encounter a difficult or a confusing passage of Scripture, the temptation can be constrain it, just block it out, we won't have to think about it. Thomas Jefferson uh, made his own version of the Bible where he cut out all of the things that struck him as being too supernatural. There's not much of the Bible left at that point. And so it's just important for us to look at the context. So right before St. Paul says that confusing line, what does he say? Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. So it's normal, it's part of the Christian vocation that we're supposed to be subordinate to one another. Out of reverence for Christ, what does that mean? Are we, am I, actually seeking the face of Christ in the people I'm near? Or am I blocking it out because it would be too hard to find Christ in these people around me? And when I recognize Christ in them, am I being obedient to the way that Christ is calling me through other people? So that's the first thing. But the second part is that it's also important to hear what St. Paul says to husbands. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? Husbands, that's a tall order. And so St. Paul is not letting anyone off the hook here. There was a seed that was planted two or three thousand years ago that eventually must have grown into a pretty strong tree And that tree got cut down at some point uh, and carried our Savior. The fruit of that tree, Jesus, is the person we receive when we receive Holy Communion, and he is the one who teaches us how to love. We stand as we offer our prayers and petitions before the Lord. For the church throughout the world, especially for Pope Francis and all bishops, um, for a renewed spirit, uh, a renewed outpouring of the spirit on the whole church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all government leaders, especially in this election year, for humility and for peace throughout our country. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those uh, in the military, uh, for their protection and safety. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all religious and all those who are serving uh, in the kingdom, often in small and hidden ways, and we pray for all married couples. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray for those who are sick and suffering, especially those who are dying in our community. We pray for uh, God's consolation and his clarity for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all those who have died and those for whom this Mass is offered, for Al Cheneau and for Thomas J. Malone. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And for your own intentions. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our King, hear these prayers that we offer you and draw us more deeply into your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, 
fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Amen. 
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you for being here and have a good day.